segment with somebody called Fode. 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 Yes. And before I start talking to you about your business, mm -hmm. fun fact, Fode was the uh, cameraman of the first episode of the Downtown Podcast, which is pretty cool, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. So we're here to talk about Evasive.com, mm -hmm. which is the stuff that you're working on. And so it's a way to expose events and, and social things that are happening in Vegas, right? Yes. So basically, ideally, uh, we want to help people find out what, what, what's, what's going on in town in a very visual manner. So basically, think of it as in uh, Pinterest for events. So we want to help you really find out what's going on really quick, especially if you are, not, uh, if you are like uh, non-English speaking. I believe that the flyers are much, you know, resonate much faster with you, and uh, you're able to uh, uh, consume the information much faster with, with the images. This is really inclusive. So, like, I've noticed that when I go to your site, the first thing I see is all the flyers for the events. Yes. So that's exactly what you're talking about. Discovery, right? exactly. Yes. Yes. And so your aim is to kind of try and fill everyone's social calendar with all of the events that you're able to surface. How do you find all of these events? Actually, we have. Uh, I actually write mean scrapers. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. Okay, okay. So let's yes. get into the technology. So how, yes. did, how did this come about? Um, initially, obviously, we couldn't do it manually, you know? Okay. So we have okay. to go out and actually find events now. Right. And uh, initially, we started in, for, uh, in Las Vegas, but now we, spe we, are, we are expanding to other cities uh, like uh, Las, uh, Los Angeles, Miami, New York, and such. And there is no way we can do it all manually. So uh, right now, what we're doing is uh, we're actually using functional languages uh, like uh, Elixir, uh, sitting on top of the um, the uh, Erlang virtual machine, and we um, we are writing some really main scrapers to go and find these events and come in and populate evasive.com. So not only not only is evasive.com super innovative, it's also very nerdy, awesome. Very in nerdy, the very hardcore. End. Yes, yes. Very cool. Yes. So, do you have any plans to expand outside the cities that you've already done so far? Um, well, honestly, we want to build a uh, global eventing system. Okay. And which will help you find events regardless of your language. Because nice. that's, that's why we are focusing on images. It's almost like, uh, think of it as like um, you know, playing cards, right? Yep. It doesn't matter your language. Like a lot of people, everybody knows what the, what the ace of spade is. Sure. Because it's very visual. Yes. You know? So ideally, if you see a photo of Jay-Z you know, on, on a flyer, you know Everyone that Everyone knows what he looks you like. You know, everybody knows what it looks yes. like, you know? So regardless of your language. So we want to focus on that and really help on discovery. Because in the future, I believe that such results will be more visual. There's no way it will be more text like base like mm -hmm, like Google, mm -hmm. you know. What I mean, then you have to decipher what it says, yeah, what's in there, exactly. translate and stuff, right? You can you you, you can easily um, localize your you know dates, times, mm -hmm. and locations and stuff. But when it comes to description, when it comes to like content itself, it's much more harder. But I, and I, so I believe that images are much easier for people to find events. Really cool. I could not agree with you more about your approach. Thank you. So you have an iPhone app right now that people can download in order to start yes. this stuff. How do they get after that? Uh, well, you can go to the iPhone, uh, iTunes, and uh, uh, search for Evasive, mm -hmm. and it's spelled E-V-A-S-I-V-E. -E. Great. And as in uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, <laughs> very evasive. Or, or if you don't have an iPhone, you can go to the, uh, to the dot .com, evasive.com, and then you can browse it you know, with, with your browser and uh, just a few events. Fantastic. Making it accessible to all different Anybody. devices, all different languages, no matter where you are in the world. I love it. Thank Worldwide, you. Worldwide, yes. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Hey, thank and you so much for Everyone check me. out evasive.com. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome everyone. So, it's Halloween. There's no better time to lose yourself in an alternate identity than Halloween. So you guys have walked into a place that you had no idea that you're going to walk into tonight. We're going to go deep into the matrix. Something that you guys may have seen. Has everyone seen the matrix? Yeah. Who's not seen the matrix? Has anyone not seen the matrix? Okay, there's one person. For those that have, sorry, I didn't mean to point you out like that. <laughs> For those uh, that have seen The Matrix, you all know that uh, it's a story about somebody, Neo, who ends up taking the red pill and finds himself in an alternate universe, a, the real reality. Right? The world that we're all in today is just an illusion, according to The Matrix. 
Now, this is a movie that is my favorite movie. Everyone has a, you know, if you ask somebody what their favorite movie is, everyone says, I don't, there's so many different choices. This is my favorite. And the reason why it's my favorite is because it is based upon the concept of Zen. And Zen has been something that I have been pursuing for the last seven or eight years, or as we're going to find out for all of my life. I was destined to be here tonight just as you all were destined to be here with me. I manifested you all tonight. You are supposed to be here tonight. And we're going to make a decision tonight whether you want to take the red pill to see the truth for the first time or to take the blue pill and deny the truth. So we're going to start there, all right? So everyone has a red pill and blue pill, right? Okay. So, but before we get along, Donovan, before we go on, there's one thing that I want to start to make sure that we understand. There's a word called spacebar. Wu Wei. Wu Wei has a lot of definitions. It's a Zen word. And at its essence, it means the action of non-doing. I like to call it going with the flow. Wu Wei is this idea that there is an energy that we all are part of in this universe that carries us in a certain direction. And we can choose to either go with the flow or fight the flow. So Wu Wei tonight is about going with the flow, all right? And I want to make sure that we're all connected. So when I say Wu, I want you all to say Wei, all right? So Wu. Wei. One more time. Wu. Wei. All right, good. That means we're connected, all right? That means we're going with the flow. We are all going in the same direction. Wu. Wei. Perfect. Zen is about this idea of letting go. Zen is about the idea of saying that, you know what? The, the idea of Zen is really this idea that there is a dialogue that's going on in your head. Does everybody have this little voice in their head that tells you what to do? Very obnoxious, tells you to get up in the morning, tells you where to go every day, tells you all the things that you should do that you really didn't do. That voice is the illusion. Just like in the matrix, that voice is not real. And we're going to take the red pill tonight to prove to you that it's not real. So what happens with this voice that's in your head is that this is the voice that controls your actions. That when you get up in the morning says, you know what? I've got a whole list of things that I got to do tonight that I really don't want to do, but I should do. And it's endlessly telling you, do this and do that. So you're a slave to this voice. It's controlling your actions. What would you pay to get rid of that voice? Because this voice ultimately is the source of all the anxiety, all the fear that dominates your life. I'm going to give you a quick story, and this is an analogy. So Dylan talked about the podcast being full of entrepreneurs. Who's all in business here? Is anybody, who runs a business? All right, so I see a number of hands in the audience that run a business. These are folks that are going to understand the analogy. For me, I'm a, an investor. I am a private equity venture capital person that gets to pick and choose who I'm going to back and support and invest in. Now, my selection criteria is very, very tight. I have a very small, narrow window of people that I want to invest in. And so for the 98, 99% of the people that I don't invest in, this is my story and my metaphor for saying, I'm sorry, but I can't invest in you. Does anybody fly? Is, anybody, is there a pilot in the audience somewhere? There's one pilot. Pilots are an incredible breed of people. We all get on a plane with no doubt, even better, he flies a helicopter, even more dangerous. We have no doubt about getting on a plane and putting our life and safety in the hands of the pilot on the plane, right? Don't even think about it. Just assume this pilot's qualified. 
I have a childhood friend, uh, his name is Tom, whose lifelong dream was to be a pilot, right? There's the beauty of just being in the air, something he wanted to do all his life. And so we would talk about being a pilot a lot and what it required to be a pilot. And for the longest time, I couldn't understand the criteria for it, which is essentially hours in the cockpit. That's really all they care about is the hours that you're in a plane flying the plane. Now, they have some tests here or there, but ultimately if you ask a pilot, he's going to say how many hours you have. They don't care what you fly. They don't care where you fly to. You can fly around in a circle for all they care. All they want to know is the number of hours. And for me, for a long time, it was, it was something that I didn't quite understand. Why is that such the important criteria? Isn't intelligence important? Isn't where you fly, what you fly important? But the answer is obvious. And the answer is the more hours you spend in a plane flying, the greater the probability is that something's going to go catastrophically wrong, right? The engine will go out. You'll get hit by lightning. You'll run out of fuel. You'll get lost. And the fact that you're still alive to talk about it, by definition, means you're a good pilot. If you're a bad pilot, you're dead. Right? That's the criteria of a good pilot, is that you have the ability to be cool under pressure. And as every pilot knows, that's the criteria for success is that when things are going catastrophically wrong, running up and down the aisles saying, oh my god, we're going to die, is not helping the cause. And so the important part of being a good pilot, good pilot is to be calm under pressure, to suppress the anxiety and the fear of the moment that impending death is seconds away. And I'm sure you've all heard of the word Zen, which oftentimes gets associated with cool, right? That's what they mean, cool under pressure. The ability to let go of fear and anxiety in the moment. So, as I said, what we're going to do tonight is to give you all a choice between the red pill and the blue pill. The red pill stands for the truth. You're going to walk out of here, if you take the red pill, in a completely different state of consciousness. Your life will no longer be as what it was when you walked in. That's the choice for the red pill. This is about Zen, as I said. The, so the, the movie, The Matrix. The movie was written and directed by the Wachowski brothers, who happened to be Zen Buddhists. They are practicing Eastern philosophy scholars. And so the movie The Matrix is really a movie about enlightenment. So when you take the red pill, when Neo takes the red pill in The Matrix, it's really a choice between whether he wants to live in the world that he lives in today or to wake to a new consciousness. And that's what the, move, that's what the word Buddha means, okay? We've all heard of Buddha. The definition of Buddha is an awakened one, which means that if you all aren't a Buddha yet, you're all, you are all asleep. Despite the fact that you're sitting here in this room thinking that you're conscious and awake, you're asleep. And the red pill is meant to wake you up. Before we do, there's one word of caution. Okay, I put... Abandon all hope, ye that enter up on the screen. This choice is an abandonment of hope. This choice has a warning sign. This choice is enter at your own risk. I can't show you what awakening is. I can't show you what enlightenment is. It's the decision that you all have to make yourself. But understand this. If you make this decision, it is your choice. And I'm not telling you you'll be happy with the choice. All I'm telling you is it's the truth. 
And I've essentially done it already, which is what Morpheus does in the Matrix is tells Neo that he understands the anxiety that we all feel, right? There's, there's an underlying angst in all of us. Who wakes up to an alarm in the morning? Does, everybody, who, does anybody wake up to an alarm? Who doesn't wake up to an alarm? All right, we, have a, we have a few people who don't wake up to an alarm, okay? Congratulations for not waking up to an alarm. That alarm represents the angst that everyone is living under, the angst that says, I have to do something. I have to be somebody. I have to make my life mean something. My life has purpose. And in the Matrix, Neo basically says, it doesn't work for me. There's this underlying anxiety that I cannot get past. It's the same anxiety that keeps you all awake at night. Who, does anybody sleep like a rock? All right, a few more hands. But it sounds like the, most, the majority of us have a difficult time sleeping. That's also the matrix at work. The inability to put the mind at rest is the matrix causing a problem for you all. So we're going to make a decision. The decision time has come. Everybody got their red pill, blue pill? The red pill represents a new consciousness, the truth, the blue pill represents denial. I want you to make your decision now. Okay, so make your decision. Choose which pill you want, red pill or blue pill. Did anybody take the blue pill? One person took, two people took the blue pill. Okay, so for those who took the blue pill, everything from here on out is a lie. Don't believe a word that I say. Don't believe a word that's happening in this room. This is just a figment of your imagination. For those that took the red pill, we're going to now get into the decision to take that red pill. What was it that made you decide to take that red pill? In Western psychology, Freud has a term called the ego. The ego is that running dialogue in your head that interprets the reality around you. It's the idea that says, I'm somebody. This is, this is who I am. This is how I interact with the real world. Reality, as you can see, is what's the truth? And as we're going to find out, if I prove to you that this ego in your head, this dialogue in your head is not real, then the reality that you think you're in is not real either. So let's get into it. I've asked you to make a decision about this red pill. From the very beginning, I said there's going to be a choice to be made. The real question is, when did you make that choice? In fact, there was a point in time where I even said, make your decision now. And then I added some more information afterwards and said, oh, but it's just a piece of candy. The reality is that you never made a choice. There's no one point in time that said, this is the choice that I'm going to make now. In fact, you could have at any point in time changed your mind. You could have taken the pill, put it in your mouth, and spit it out and said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to take that red pill. It was only until you swallowed the red pill that you made a choice. But if I said to you, did you make the choice when you swallowed? You wouldn't say yes. You would say, no, no, I made my decision before I swallowed. I made my decision at some other point in time. The reality is, is that you never made a decision. You felt as if you wanted to take the red pill. In fact, you made the choice to take the red pill before you even walked in the room. I made the red pill all about truth, and truth was important to you, so you decided to take the red pill. Let's take another analogy. Why are you here tonight? At any point in time, you'll say to me, I made a decision to be here tonight. You could have walked out the door when you're on your way here, and somebody could have said to you, 
hey, guess what? I've got tickets to the show on the Strip, Cirque du Soleil, whoever, you, whoever your favorite person is. Somebody may have come along and said, I've got a better choice for you. And in an instant, you would have said, you know what? I don't want to go to that podcast. I'm going to go to the show. And that would have been your choice. And you would have forgotten about this altogether. What you're really doing is you're going along through life until the next best thing happens. And the illusion is this ego, this dialogue in your head is going back like a Monday morning quarterback and saying, oh, I chose this. I made that decision. The reality is you didn't make any decisions. The reality is you were floating along in life out of control. These decisions that you make are all decisions that were made years before based upon what's important to you. So the idea that you're in control is the illusion. You think you have free will. You think that you make decisions to say, I decide this and therefore this happens. The reality is all you're doing is living in the moment right here, right now. The past is an illusion that your ego desperately wants to make sense of. It's trying to say, wait, I have a reason for being here. It's all the decisions that I made in the past. I made that choice. The reality is you made no choice. The reality is you were in the moment doing what you felt. And that's the moment of enlightenment. To realize that there is no such thing as control. Think about that for a second. If you're not in control, why do you do anything in the world that you do? It's an illusion. It's this running dialogue in your head that says, I'm doing it because I want to make my environment something that I control. I'll give you another example. We may not have sound on this one again. But the same thing is happening for the future when you make a decision. You're prospectively saying, if I choose this, I expect X, Y, and Z to happen. But at the end of the day, you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. You may get hit by a bus tomorrow. You have all kinds of infinite number of variables that are coming into you that are going to change the course of your life. And so for you to say, if I make this decision today, this is going to happen tomorrow, you are setting yourself up for failure. These expectations you have for your life are a complete guess. You are guessing about everything that's going to happen to you in the future. And as long as you are OK with guessing, you're good. But understand that it's a guess. And if the guess doesn't come out right, is there any reason to be upset? It was a guess. If I said tomorrow, guess what's going to happen, and it doesn't happen, would you be upset? No, because you're guessing. But it's this dialogue up here, the ego, that wants to say, no, I can tell what's going to happen tomorrow. I know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's the illusion. So the video that I was going to show is uh, a Zen proverb called, We'll See. Has anybody seen Charlie Wilson's War? One person? OK, so a, a fantastic movie. Charlie Wilson is a congressman from um, uh, Texas, I believe. I'm not quite sure. But the movie is about how we funded the Mujahideen uh, fighters in Afghanistan. And the billions of dollars that we spent to fight the Soviets in Afghanistan and the money that went to Osama bin Laden. So Osama bin Laden was a freedom fighter. And so the United States government spent billions and billions of dollars, gave it to Osama bin Laden to fight the Soviets. 
and at, this is back in the 1990s. And in fact, what happened was the Afghan freedom fighters, as we called them, won. The Soviets pulled back. It so happens that, as we all know today, that Osama bin Laden ended up being one of our greatest enemies and terrorists that, for 9-11, was the mastermind behind taking down the Twin Towers, the plane that went into the Pentagon, that was down in Pennsylvania. It turns out that the money that we spent to help Osama bin Laden ended up being used against us. It is the analogy of the Zen master saying, well, see, you never know what's going to happen. You think you have an idea that if I do this, these good things will happen. But there are an infinite number of variables which you cannot see. And those variables are at work in ways that you will never know that just as easily will end up coming back to bite you. And that's the idea of the Zen proverb, proverb we'll see. The whole idea of enlightenment is the idea that there is no such thing as control. Our expectations for the future are just guesses. It's an illusion. And if you can get to that place, if you can get to a place where you can let go of this idea that tomorrow I can control things, that's the place of enlightenment. Has anybody in here gone through a near-death experience? Has anybody had somebody that's gone through a near-death experience? Okay, so I'm sure many of you have heard of uh, the st five stages of mourning and loss in a near-death experience. For those of you who have not gone through this experience, the, the idea of going through a near-death experience is very much a Zen experience. This idea of letting go of control is a place of enlightenment. And so when they talk about the five stages of mourning and loss, that's what we're talking about here tonight. The first stage is denial. I'm not going to die. You're talking about somebody else. I'm going to beat this. The second stage is bargaining. Well, you know what? If I get past this, I'm going to be a brand new person. If I get on a health kick, I'm going to beat it. I'll be OK. The next stage is anger, being upset at the fact that you're going to die and starting to blame all the things that you should or should not have done that got you in the situation. The fourth step is depression. The feeling of pulling away from everything that you love and care for and becoming isolated to cope with the idea that you're about to die. The fifth and final step, which not everyone gets to, not everyone becomes enlightened, not everyone takes the red pill and buys into it, is acceptance. Acceptance that we're all going to die, and acceptance that we're all not in control. This is the key to enlightenment. If you can accept this fact, the thing that I just told you, which is we're not in control, that this thing up here is an illusion, if you can accept that and believe that, that is the idea of letting go. And there's the beauty of letting go, which is being able to go with the flow. Back to Wu Wei, right? Wu. Wu. This feeling that whatever happens it's all good. If I tell you you're not in control, it lets you go. It lets you release yourself from all the hang-ups, all the anxiety, all the doubt, all the fear that has been running your life. You can let go because you're not in control. And in fact, is anybody, who has somebody holding a grudge against? Does anybody have a grudge? Anybody's angry about something or someone? You can let all those things go, too, because 
the person you're angry at, they're not in control either. This is the beauty of enlightenment and Zen is that if you can get to a place where you accept what I'm saying, there is no control, it's all good. You don't have to be angry or upset about anything anymore. And that's when, if you're a pilot on a plane, your engine goes out and you're going nose first into the ground, you can say, you know what? It's all good. That's the Zen place that pilots get to. That can say, you know what? I'm not really in control. All I can do is the best that I can do. And that's what enlightenment is about. That is what awakening to it is, is, is about. That's, that's what they call being a Buddha. And so when you see Zen masters that talk about this, they all have that same serenity and calmness and coolness that I talk about, which is, it's all good. They have let control go. They have let the fear and anxiety go. And in doing so, everything and everyone becomes something they're connected to. And so this gets us to the final point of where Zen leads you to and enlightenment leads you to. If you can really believe and accept that there is no such thing as control, that this thing up here is just an illusion that's telling you you're in control, there is a thing called flow. Has everyone heard of flow before? Being in the zone, going into beast mode. How many people here are musicians or artists? All right, that place where when you lose yourself, right, where all of a sudden you're so engrossed into whatever activity that you're in that you get up and go, oh my God, it's been three hours. I had no idea. Where that voice in your head has been silenced, that's the feeling of enlightenment too. That's the feeling of letting go. And that is the place that Zen masters seek when they go into meditation. It's a place of being in complete harmony and flow in everything you do. So if you're not in control and you've got to get up tomorrow, rather than fighting the alarm, rather than fighting your boss, rather than fighting all the things that you fight, it's about letting it go. And being in the moment and being in flow all the time. Where it becomes all good all the time. That is liberation. That is the enlightenment that you hear about when you hear people talk about awakening. This idea of the choice that you chose, the, the pill you chose tonight, was never really a choice. This is something that you decided before you even got in here that you wanted to know the truth. And now that you've made that choice, I can now call you all enlightened, all awakened all Buddhas. And that's the path to enlightenment. Wu, thank you very much. Remember like a flashback, Vegas Tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.